After last night's video about uh, the prayer in the garden, I wanted to take you to the arrest of Jesus. This is covered in all four Gospels also. And after going over it, I just wanted to paint the picture of how it went down for you. It might surprise you, because I have to bring you back before I get there to, in Luke 22, around verse 35, 36, Jesus asked his disciples uh, if they had a sword. And if they didn't have a sword, that they had to go buy one because he had to be accounted as a rebel. Now, he was saying that to himself, but he was just asking these guys if they had a sword. And they reply, yes, master, we actually have two swords, two swords. I didn't know if you realized, but two swords were taken out that night to the garden. So Jesus is the one who asked them to bring the swords. Now I want to take you quickly back to you're going to betray me. Remember that I told you at the Passover dinner, Jesus, they were having a whole bunch of fun and all of a sudden Jesus kind of puts a party to an end and says, one of you guys are going to betray me. And Peter goes, I never betray you, master. I die for you. I want to tell you something. In hindsight now, looking at those four, the four gospels of the arrest, Jesus set Peter up. Number one, he put a sword in the man's hand and then told him that, that someone was going to betray him. And Peter for sure thought it was him. But he, that Jesus was talking about him, but he would point blank said, I'm going to die for you. And then Peter, of course, we know Jesus says that he's going to deny him. Now, you got to square some knots with this. Peter's a, he's a man's man. He's a fisherman. So as Judas is told to go do what he has to do, he goes to the, to the Jewish leaders and they assign him a, a, a legion of soldiers, Roman soldiers, probably around 600, and a, and a, and a battalion of temple guards. So you have a, quite the group of men marching toward the garden with Judas leading them. And as he gets there, he sees Jesus and he runs up to him and he gives him a kiss. And Jesus goes, who are you guys looking for? They go, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus says, I am. I am. And they hit the ground. All, at least 600 of them hit the ground. As they get back up and dust themselves off, Jesus again goes, who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. And they, Jesus goes, I am. I am he. And they hit the ground again. At this point, when they get up, they come, Peter jumps into action. He brings out his sword and he wipes the ear off a, a temple guard. Now, we see in one gospel that Jesus has to tell Peter to stop. Peter had him at bay. He had 700 soldiers, 600 soldiers at bay. And Jesus tells him, Peter, don't you realize I have to go through this cup of sorrow my father has put before me. So Peter had him stopped. Peter had him stopped. And at that point, the ruffle began, uh, the tussle and the rest began. And two gospels tell us that all the disciples scatter at that point. At that point, when the actual arrest took place, when they actually grabbed hold of Jesus, they bolted, all of them. Hmm. Huh. Then Jesus is left with the soldiers and the temple guards. And he says to them, you have to come to me like this. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm out in the open all the time, but you have to come to me like a rebel, like I'm a rebel. And he leans down and he touches the man that Peter had hit with the sword. And I'm assuming in the middle of all that tussle, no one really realized what went down except for that guard. And when Jesus touched him and his ear was back on his head, who is he going to tell? And they dragged Jesus off. But why did Jesus heal him? Why did Jesus heal that man? 
because they would have came after Peter and they would have slaughtered him. No one was to the wiser. Except for Peter. He wasn't there. He never saw the event. He thought he was going to be slaughtered, just like Jesus. Which puts the denial in a whole new light. Especially the third, when a little girl comes to him and says, Aren't, you're one of his disciples. And he swears to God, he's not. No, Peter was in a tough spot. Us Christians, we can put ourselves in a tough spot. We think our flesh can do all kinds of things for God. Did you hear what I just said? We think our flesh can do all kinds of things for God, but that's not true. You want to be led by the Spirit. You don't want Jesus coming back behind you, cleaning up your mess. But Jesus had to be tied to Isaiah 53. He had to be tied to the suffering servant. He had to be accounted for. He had to be a rebel. And he knew when he put that sword in Peter's hand that Peter was going to use it. And he was going to be accounted as a rebel, just as the book says. You guys have a great night, and I'll see you at sunrise.